There we go. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. This is going to be session number four of the Elder Council Community World Building Nights, I guess we're calling it. Uh, we've we've left off last time. I think we missed a week, unfortunately, because I was having some issues with uploading and stuff, and I wanted to give everybody time to check out the previous videos, which, if you're watching this live, welcome to the stream. All of the previous sessions are over on YouTube, and if you're watching this on YouTube, we do this live every Tuesday night over on twitch.tv slash elder council. So uh, definitely check out whichever other medium that you haven't been exposed to yet. And if you are on the YouTube watching this after the fact, be sure to leave comments and stuff just because you didn't get to participate live. I do like to upload the videos so everyone can leave comments and kind of try to contribute that way. This is a stream where we try to build a campaign setting for D, D or any rpg that you would want to play i guess build it from the ground up together as a community through polls and community like brainstorming events eventually i would like to do you know like a big 12 hour stream full of checking out different campaign setting source books and checking out different cool artwork and all sorts of stuff like that like D, &D history and going through stuff and really like gathering like a huge trove of inspiration for us to pull from but we're we're getting a pretty good start so far this is going to be a really like you know a long-term project that i'm really excited about and eventually when the world is complete we will turn it into a full-on you know published source book i'll maybe make it into a pdf or maybe we'll do a kickstarter and turn it into a real physical book if it ends up uh, being something that that good we'll see but either way, I'll make it available to anyone that helped work on it or anyone that's, you know, a supporter of the stream or or whatever, or YouTube, a, I'll make it available for you guys to download for free. And as you can see on the screen here, <clears throat> uh, No Humans Live Here is the title of this episode because last time we ran a poll and I thought it would be interesting, the kind of the theme of last time's episode was putting creative restrictions on yourself and I've kind of talked about how that can be useful as a writer or a fine artist or a designer any any type of artist I think it can be useful to put creative restrictions on yourself and I won't go too in detail about that because I kind of rambled about it last time but we chose to put the restriction on this world building of choosing one of the races from the player's handbook you know the just standard 5e player's handbook choosing one of the starter races and choosing to omit them from this world. And we ran a poll. It ran for a couple weeks until this episode aired. And human was the choice that people wanted to see deleted from this world. I think that's a super interesting choice and we're going to go with it. So kind of the way we've been running this so far is we're just kind of throwing all of our brainstorm ideas into the hat and seeing, seeing what we go with. And eventually we'll start narrowing things down and sticking with stuff, but we'll leave everything open to change in the future. This is going to be the first kind of cutoff point where from here forward, this idea is now concrete. And then every couple of weeks we'll run another poll to finalize something and then that will be set in stone. So here every couple of weeks we'll still do these brainstorming sessions, but we'll kind of have it broken up into chunks like from here on forward this world is no matter what else we change there are no humans that are going to live in this campaign setting and i think that's pretty exciting so <clears throat> we're gonna have to come up with some different ideas and rules and, and laws and and concepts that deal with that fact uh first of which and we will just jump right into it here we're gonna have to come up with why uh, were the humans killed off? Did they never exist here at all? That's the obviously the first thought that that brings to the mind. Uh, what, is, what is the reason that there's no humans here? Because if we just we kind of picked out of a hat, you know, we, we left it up to the poll to, to choose which race would not be present here. If we just never addressed that, then 
I think that would automatically mean that they never existed at all, right? That would mean the other races of this plane don't have any knowledge of humans, <clears throat> which in D&D language all automatically means that maybe this plane is cut off from, you know, teleporting to other planes. And you have to think about, in D&D in &D at least, high-level magic users can just teleport to other planes of existence. Like, if you are on planet X, you could just teleport to the Nine Hells or Mount Celestia or just another, <clears throat> excuse me, just another planet uh, that you know about with uh, either a teleportation circle or high enough level magic. So for there to be no humans on this planet, they either were all killed or they are in the process of being killed off and they can't come here for some reason or they never existed at all and no one on this world knows about them or maybe they do and they're keeping it a secret um, because this world is you know unable to be teleported to by those high level magic users because if there was no humans here and it was just a normal world humans would have ended up here right through teleporting or at least there would be a couple if not you know societies of them maybe they would visit every once in a while who knows that's the kind of stuff that we're going to have to break down and, and check out in our kind of brainstorming exploratory phases here on the streams. So keep that stuff at the front of your mind while we go into other topics like how do the races who do inhabit this place feel about certain things and is the lack of humanity impacting that at all? <clears throat> it doesn't have to be. If they just never existed that's totally fine. Maybe the world is sealed off from the outside, but everyone on the earth on the planet is totally fine. And they just never humans just never were a thing. So it doesn't change how they feel about anything at all. Cause that it couldn't. Uh, so first suggestion from Dr. Feargood, uh, humans killed themselves off and decimated the world. And what came out of it is today, basically what we are doing to ourselves today in real life, this would lead to climate change and how most of the world is a desert. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, so possible explanations. Let's go right into it. Uh, humanity thrived and overdid themselves, leading to possible climate change. I really like when campaign settings or source books or, you know, just fantasy writing in general takes from real life political climates but not in a overbearing way right uh around 9 11 there was a lot of fantasy and sci-fi writing that was like just way too heavy-handed and overbearing and stuff like that but i think it was a really perfect opportunity to slightly draw from that kind of political climate and not overdo it and this today's issues like are even more intense and like in your face climate change and stuff like that all the time you're hearing about it if you sprinkle a little bit of that into your games it can be very powerful you know but you got to remember players come to play these games as an escape sometimes so you don't want to just be like hey welcome to the game i know you're playing this game to get out of your stressful life here's <laughs> here's some political issues so you have to be very light and subtle with it but i think it can be a very powerful tool for storytelling so humanity thrived and overdid themselves leading to possible climate change slash apocalypse humans died off left a oh, wasteland or the deserted world behind so then we also have to think about if this is a like post-human apocalyptic world that has magic and other races uh, we have to start thinking about what the timeline of this world that we're crafting is are we going to be kind of focusing on one specific era of time to play our games in are we at the beginning of the time timeline towards the end um how long has it been since humans died off you know like a lot of post-apocalyptic fiction focuses on you know like 10 or 20 years after the apocalypse and everyone's trying to survive what if this was you know 
40,000 years after humans died off. And there's just the smallest sliver of human society remaining, but everyone else has totally moved on and evolved past it. And that's why nobody even knows humans ever existed. It's just like us, maybe with the most ancient of uh, humanoid kind of civilizations here on earth. Like we really don't know much about people that lived on this planet 50, 60,000 years ago, other than they were genetically the same as we are now, but their societies and, and cultures were just totally, we, we can't even grasp how they were now because they don't have any history to impart on us with the uh, language or written information. So it would be interesting to think about, but it's totally up to you guys as well. And we will we'll just keep that in your mind as well. Uh, what about a self-sacrifice of the humans to change the world state somehow? Uh, possibly blood magic or something. Then you find, like, human ruins hinting at the event, but nobody knows what happened really. Oh, yeah. See, we were kind of on the same brainwave there with the, uh, <clears throat> like, ruins of their society, and no one really knows who or what they were, but there's slight evidence that they did something to change the world. I think that's cool. One... Uh, one place that I've seen that done really well is in Mass Effect. If any of you guys are fans of that franchise, they hint at, you know, the old societies and the old technology. And eventually, and this is spoilers for the Mass Effect saga, if you haven't played those games, they're very old and you should have by now, but they're super good. Um, throughout the games, you find out that there's these, you know, older than time beings called the reapers that every once in a while every you know thousands and thousands of years they come back into the the galaxy and wipe out all the life and restart it and there's hints of the old like societies that have been wiped out before and they find their technology and they find just hints and subtle writings and technologies that hint at the reapers and what they were going to do but nobody has any idea of the humans when they find this stuff. They're just like, wow, this is some crazy ancient, ancient, like barbarian technology that we have no idea about. Like, wish we could figure it out, but we can't. It's too old. And then they kind of just are like <clears throat> in, in wonder of it. And that's the same way that we would be or that maybe the races that live on this plane would be. So uh, let's see. Let's write down Twiddler's idea here really quick, and then I'll read what Vampire King has to say. Uh, possible self-sacrificial event on part of humanity. Blood magic. I like that. I don't even know what we could do with blood magic, but that's cool. <laughs> it's usually pretty cool. One of my favorite parts of Avatar uh, the last airbender is like you know the the idea and concept of like blood bending and stuff like that like <clears throat> a spellcaster who's so powerful in a certain type of magic that it like opens up access to another type for them you know water bending to blood bending that kind of stuff and obviously this this is going to be more of like a D, D type thing but i like to take inspiration from those places so we could come up with something cool uh so, uh, current day races stumble upon the ruins of humanities, of humans, event, slash, uh, rituals. Nice. So Vampire King says, what if there was a plague or sickness that forces a few hundred or thousand into an underground bunker <clears throat> that doesn't get discovered until the campaign? And it's assumed they all died to the plague. That's interesting. And we can actually, we can separate that into two ideas, I think, because that's really cool. So possible, uh, like, extinction level plague or event and then humanity forced into bunkers slash underground slash hiding 
due to plague, persecution, etc. So this way it leaves it open to we could go with the plague thing, and then if we don't, if we decide not to go with the plague thing, we could still go with the humanity forced into bunkers or underground thing. Like it leaves us more options. I really like that idea. Obviously, Fallout, the most famous example of that, but I think you can do it in different ways too. Like if you had a race like like humans forced into these, you know, shelters or underground bunkers, whatever, but it wasn't a apocalyptic type of a, a thing. Like, like in Fallout, everyone who was alive had to go into the Fallout shelters or become, uh, you know, radiated mutants or just die because of the nuclear war. But what if there was still, you know, dwarves and elves and tieflings and all of the normal D and D races living like normal on this planet, but only humans were affected by the plague, and the only way to save themselves was to go into these underground bunkers and only allow the humans that weren't infected into the bunkers. Because I think that's a super interesting idea. Like everyone else just gets to continue living and the the world continues progressing like normal through time but humanity is just forced underground and is kind of frozen in time in this era whenever they were forced underground i think that's super interesting and then maybe 2000 years later they come out and humans are still you know like this these medieval like marauding the humans and they come out and maybe the dragonborn and the elves are like these like super advanced like brilliant spellcasters and stuff like there's a lot you can do with that i think it's a great idea not quite like fallout which i was never really super into more about surviving nukes this is more like surviving zombies or a plague very scary because you can't breathe the air yeah yeah morlocks yeah and and exactly like maybe they go underground for so long that they change and they come back out and they're just not even humans anymore they're you know more like something from the Underdark or whatever. And that could be, maybe even be a possible explanation for the Underdark in this world. Which, if you're not familiar with that, the Underdark is kind of that type of thing, you know, like where the the dark uh, mole people dwell in D&D campaigns and the, the dark elves are from the Underdark. You know, it's like the dark cavernous underside of the plane <laughs> when they resurface they're wearing gas masks <laughs> yeah <laughs> and everyone on the surface is like oh everyone else is totally fine that plague left a long time ago and they're like you guys were just wasting your time underground <laughs> i think we're coming up with some pretty cool stuff here thank you guys so much for hanging out and contributing i really like all this i really like the this uh, possible self-sacrificial event, maybe with blood magic or something, like uh, maybe humanity discovered some type of powerful like blood magic and it got so out of hand that they figured either they would get it under control and be like masters of the universe or it would fail and they would destroy everything. So they chose to seal themselves away, you know, until someone came forth that could, could control everything. I think that's a cool, like, cool possibility. Uh, they won't know uh, until one guy tests out the air. Yeah, <laughs> that would be me. I'd go up to the surface and test it out and be like, oh, uh, uh. no, I'm just kidding, guys. We're fine. <laughs> We're all good. The water's fine. Come on up, guys. <laughs> good old apocalypse jokes. Hmm. So I really like the blood magic self-sacrificial idea really like this this kind of forced underground like i really possibly mixing those two like i was saying they had to seal themselves away or something and this like the possible climate change apocalypse thing like maybe they did some crazy ritual with blood magic like sucked the life force out of every other living being on the surface of the planet so the humans like hid themselves away from their their shame and their like betrayal of life 
and the rest of the world had to like slowly grow back over time while humans were sealed away underground or something. Who knows? There's a million different things we could do with this. And uh, if you're watching this on YouTube after the fact, uh, please, please leave some comments and suggestions in the comments below. I will add them into our brainstorming box here. Uh, I watch and read all of the comments that I get and stuff, so definitely check it out. And we, we stream live at uh, 8 p.m. Eastern every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Sunday mornings. So come by the stream and give us some some assistance with the brainstorming. We can never have enough heads on this problem. It's a fun problem to have. We're just, you know, building this stuff together however long it takes. I'm not in a super big hurry to uh, rush to the next topic anytime. We're just chilling and having a good time thinking of some cool inspirational ideas for our world. And then whenever the current campaign, we play a live D&D campaign every Wednesday, whenever the current one ends, which will probably be, let's say in the next couple months, um, I'll probably take a break for a while from D&D &D to write and finish up both this world and the current world that I'm working on in my own time. Uh, I'm working on my own campaign setting. And then the, the next campaign that we do on stream will be in one of these worlds. I'm not sure which one yet. Maybe this one. That would be pretty fun if we built a campaign setting together and then we actually got to see it live on stream every week. That'd be a lot of fun. But no worries, we do have quite a bit of fun action left in the current campaign, so hope you guys are enjoying that. If you haven't seen it at all, all of the previous episodes are up on the Twitch highlights and the YouTube channel. Any more ideas for the No Humans Live Here thread of brainstorming for today before we, before we call it? Don't want these to go on too long. I think it's easier for me to both upload and, you know, kind of edit and modify these and put them on YouTube if they're a little bit shorter. And it's easier for people to digest them and help to comment on them, like I was saying, if they're not, you know, two or three hour streams like before. I think, you know, someone starts, even if someone starts watching a two hour world, uh, world building stream VOD on YouTube, even if they're super excited about it and want to pitch in, you know, after an hour, it's like, okay, I can't, <laughs> I can't watch this whole thing. Nobody has that much time to watch multiple two hour YouTube videos per week from one person. I know people have a lot of stuff to do and a lot of people to keep up with on their content creation. So we'll try to keep it short and sweet and at least under an hour and under like 45 minutes if we can. Please no zombie apocalypse. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm just going to say like, the plague thing, I like the idea of a plague, but just because of trying to think of a way for it to work in D&D &D and in the event that there is, you know, there's no humans on this planet like people voted on, I don't want there to be <clears throat> any sort of like cop out. Like if there's zombies, maybe there would be like a cleric that could somehow turn a zombie back into a human and zombies are they're cool. We could definitely go that direction if that's what people are into. I just don't want to solidify it right now. I think that maybe just like a general plague that only affects humans, we could go with our, our own interesting thing. It wouldn't even have to be zombies. We could make up our own plague, like our own disease that affects humans. Maybe it makes them like just totally explode and their blood gets everywhere and if anyone gets hit by the blood it infects the other humans around them too who knows you know we can invent our own plague for humans and that could be an entire episode as well yeah we do have some cool ideas to run with i'm excited about it man thank you for your input vampire king dr Feargood, good really appreciate it you guys so i think uh, make our own human mutated race from the plague. That would be very cool. That would be very cool. And I've wanted to make an undead playable race, you know? And I think that might be a cool way to do it. I've wanted to do that for a while. Kind of inspired by, you know, like Dark Souls, the like chosen undead type of a thing. Like a, thinking of like a player, a player race that the, the catch... Uh, I think some of my favorite playable D&D player races are ones that have abilities outside of just the stat increases, you know, like ASMR can activate something and 
gain the wings and a lot of different D and D races have like kind of like activated abilities that are strong and flavorful, but not overpowered. And I think a like an undead player character race that can't die, but if you do die, then you come back like in a weakened state. I think that'd be pretty interesting. And you'd have to put some like pretty major downsides on it because a big part of the the, the caution and the the reward systems in D and D are based on like your character can die. So if you make a, a player character race that can't die, you have to put some major restrictions on that. Maybe they can avoid death a few times, or if they do die and come back, they are very weakened permanently. Um, there's some interesting things you can do with that, and I will keep that in mind. <laughs> so I think let's save this here so we don't lose it for next time. We'll come back to this, and next week we will we will start thinking about the timelines, what I wanted to do is check out this calendars uh, section of uh, World Anvil, sorry. <laughs> World Anvil is the website that we're using for all of our world building uh, tracking and all that stuff. It's a great website, definitely check it out. I don't know how this works. I guess we just go create calendar. So we will click that button next week and we'll get it started and see exactly how we can do that think about what timeline we want to make for this world, where in the timeline we want to place our campaign setting. Like if we play a game in this world, do we want to be at the beginning, the middle, the end of the timeline? If this human extinction thing happens at the middle, then we might want to put a certain amount of time in between that and where we are focusing on creating, you know, factions and characters and the place where we can actually run a game from. So start thinking about that stuff. We'll, we'll start kind of vaguely making the outlines of a calendar next week and talking about timelines in general. I have some ideas about that. But that'll be it for today. If you check this out on YouTube, I'll say one more time, come by the stream on Tuesday nights and help pitch in. If you guys are watching this live, thank you so much uh, for hanging out and for all of the ideas and brainstorming. Don't go anywhere. The stream is not going to end. We're just going to stop the video here. So... Thank you guys for watching and we'll see you next time.